Okay, moving right along, we got our second look, our second full-size trailer of The Valley. Now, the first trailer for this did not get uh, a lot of positive responses. A lot of comments like, oh, we didn't, who asked for this? Oh, it's stupid. Oh, it sucks. Like, I get all of that, but I kind of was saying on the show, let's wait until we see it until we completely hate it. Now, this second trailer completely spins that first one on its head, and we see the darker side of the valley. We see these issues. We see the fighting between Jax and Brittany. We see all of these things happening, and an immediate immediately got you titillated, immediately got you in. Now, this is going to be on next week after Vanderpump Rules episode. We go right into the valley. I'm really uh, excited to see the connector scene where they did that with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills going into Vanderpump Rules. Remember, Sheena was the connector. So I think Sheena is going to be the connector on this one as well that takes us into the valley. But I have seen the first episode now. And I got to tell you, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It doesn't reinvent anything, but it it kept my interest. I think the new uh, couples, which we'll talk about, very, uh, you know, you see the cracks in their relationships. You do see potentially, I don't know. I mean, this is probably a good uh, advertisement for birth control because I watched it and going like, oh man, thank God I don't have kids. I will say the frustrating part is the Jackson Brittany stuff that is kicked up of late where Brittany has moved out of the marital home. And they did pick back up cameras to film that for a later episode of The Valley, even though they had finished principal photography. Um, I was told that this is very real, but I'm sorry. With all of this stuff, I still just, there's part of me that just, it's hard to accept. And also, Jax and Brittany were with Schwartz and Doty at some convention, you know, some kind of celebrity convention this past weekend. Um, and then Jax and Brittany are back together on their podcast this week with Doty as the guest. Uh, also, uh, I was told from my source saying this is very real, but it's not to do with cheating. And I did not push them for further information. That'll come, you know, when it is, I mean, I, I've seen the cheating rumors like everybody else has uh, saying this is very real, but not to do with cheating. But I just think the timing of all of this, especially when you're trying to sell a show. And if you think about who we knew Jax Taylor to be as a character on this show, there is this kind of thinking that he's smarter than everybody else, but he always like sticks his foot in it somehow. And it never completely like anything that he's trying to plan kind of crumbles. So to me, this also seems like a little bit of a, a structured plan in a sense, even though there are elements that seem very real. And even watching this trailer, the drama between Jax and Brittany seem very real because we know, we've we known this man or this character of Jax Taylor to do very hurtful things to kind of dismiss women's feelings, especially his wife. Um, so that seems very real to me. The other thing that it's like, whether it's real or not, it's kind of sad no matter how you cut it because you're monetizing your family at this point. It's even beyond Vanderpump rules where these, you know, most of the cast doesn't have kids. So they're just fucking them their own self up. But now it's like, you're bringing your family into it. And you know, if it's real, it sucks. And if it's fake, it sucks. And it's weird because you're potentially leaving a huge audience to think a certain thing about your family that you're so proud of, if that makes sense. So uh, let's get into a couple of the characters before we start this, just so we can have the same language. Jax and Brittany are the main cast members in this. They are heavily featured, obviously, in episode one. And then you go to Christian Doty, legend of Vanderpump Rules, and her boyfriend, Luke Broderick. Now, they met at Doty's uh, best friend's wedding, um, and you find out in the first episode, and she's talked about this on the podcast, they had sex uh, in the back of like uh, behind a tent at this wedding. Now, Luke, he is, uh, I believe he lives in Colorado and that's where most of his work and his life is. So that's a big storyline that you're going to deal with. Is Luke willing to move more of his life out here, especially because they're trying to have a kid, which we see in this trailer. Now, trigger warning, I do want to mention and that everybody knows already, unfortunately, Kristen and Luke did get pregnant and she did lose the baby, which is just so sad and horrifying. And I'm not sure if that show is going to cover that, but we do see them talking about it 
right from the jump on the first episode. So you have them as a couple, and then you have Danny Bucco and Nia Bucco. And Danny has been an actor in Los Angeles for a very long time, and they have three kids under the age of two. Uh, Danny's big thing is that he never has gotten sleep since these kids have come into their life. He says that ad nauseum. So you got Danny and Nia as a couple, and then you have Jesse Lally and Michelle Lally. Now they work together in real estate. They don't actually live in the Valley. They live right by the Chateau Marmont. And this is a, this is one to watch. They seem really on each other's nerves from the jump. And Jesse comes off in a certain way, very cocky. Um, and, uh, that's the, that's a couple to watch. I think there's a lot of cracks there. And then you have Jason Caperna and Janet Caperna, Janet's, uh, original name, Janet Elizabeth. She's been on this podcast a bunch of times and Janet and Jason, they are expecting their first baby when the Valley starts. Uh, Jason's a lawyer, uh, but Janet used to be Sheena's best friend, uh, helped Ariana with the something about her merchandise, uh, has been kind of involved in all of their lives for so long. Now, they're kind of what it seems like in the first episode, the reliable narrators of this. Like they are not presented to be they're, they're presented to be a unified front um, for whatever that's worth in the first episode. And then you have a couple friends of you have Jasmine Good. You had seen her on The Bachelor at one point. Now, Jasmine Good, she did get offered a contract role on Vanderpump Rules one season, but she turned it down because they were offering her little to no money. But Jasmine is a friend of all of these people. I, I've seen her at certain parties before with them. She's always been around this group. And then you have Zach Wickham. Now, Zach Wickham is Brittany Cartwright's best friend from their hometown. And he is, I mean, I don't want to, he's kind of like that gay friend. He's sassy. He says some really brutal things. And you see in this trailer, we're about to talk about, you know, there's a lot of stuff stirred up by him and he comments on everything. And there's always that one person that you kind of need. They're essential to a reality television show, but I see him pissing a lot of people off, especially the cast members of the Valley. So we start the trailer. We see the logo for the Valley all in yellow. It's Bravo's the Valley. Remember this is produced by the same. Uh, now this isn't produced by evolution media, but it is uh, produced by the guy that is in charge of Evolution Media. Um, hold on one sec. I'm trying to find his name. Okay, I can't believe I forgot his name. Alex Baskin. Alex Baskin is the head of Evolution, but this is actually produced by Alex Baskin's other company. So I thought that's very interesting. So Evolution, obviously, they produce Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Orange County, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But this is Alec Baskin's other company that produces The Valley. So let's start. This season on The Valley. The Valley is hot, hot, hot. So we see Brittany immediately with Cruz, little Cruz couchy. Cruz uh, getting potentially a diaper pull up on the couch. And Brittany's like... The valley is hot, hot, hot. Or the valley is hot, hot, hot. Then we see Jax Taylor posing with a bowling ball, which is what you do. Christmas! Oh, on your knees. And then what you can do is go behind. Okay, so we see a bunch of like fun shots of like people rollerblading the cat. We see Dodie. We see some of the other cast members like Jasmine and Zach. And then we land on uh, what looks to be some kind of a Lamaze class with Jason and Janet where they're on a rolling ball. Uh, you know, so right now it's just kind of that fun loving. This is the valley. Nothing wrong here. We're raising families. How we got the baby in the first place. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. This one's so ovulated. Five to ten. At 40. It's great. I have a beautiful son. Okay, so then we see Kristen Doty and her boyfriend Luke uh, at a doctor's office where the doctor says, hey, look, everything looks great. You're ovulating. And like Luke's like, all right, all right. And then we hear a Jack's voiceover of like, I've got everything, dude. I've got the family. I've got the Corvette. I've got everything. Life is good. I got a beautiful bar. I got money in the bank. It's only a matter of time for you're going to be living with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll say that. Divorced and miserable. <laughs> Okay, so that's a great little scene because this is also uh, going to be revolving around Jax opening his bar, Jax's Saloon on Ventura Boulevard, right between Laurel Canyon and Coldwater Canyon. 
um, right by Rocco's in, in the Valley, the, the, the Valley version of Rocco's. So it's right next to it. This was already an existing bar. A lot of people have asked how this went up so fast when places like Schwartz and Sandy's Tom, Tom, and something about her took forever. Well, because this was already an existing bar, there was already an existing liquor license. They just literally had to do signage and decoration. So that is one of the reasons this was able to go up so quickly, but also great storyline for a first season of a show. But we hear him say all of this stuff. I've got money in the bank. I got this and this. And Schwartz is there in this scene. He's like, huh, pretty soon you're like going to ruin it all and like end up divorced and homeless like me. And Jack's like, ha ha ha. And then he's like, hey, don't say that, dude. <laughs> it's kind of a funny scene. And that's when the creepy music starts playing, like the cracks behind the valley. And this is when we see a new couple talking at a restaurant. I feel like a marriage is so special. And it's so frustrating because it feels out of my control. Baby fever. So it's, uh, you've got the, the two couples, the Lallies. Uh, let me get to their name real quick. I've got to memorize it. You had Jesse Lally and Michelle Lally. And you also have Danny and Nia. And I believe it's Nia that was the one talking there and crying uh, across from the other couple. And she just seems like she is at her wits end with everything. Uh, then we cut to Brittany holding, I believe this is Nia's baby. And she's like, the baby fever is crazy. I'm getting baby fever. Oh, it's off the charts, baby. Brittany holding a baby. We're through the roof. Bringing in another human being. It's worrisome to me. I live for my kid. Don't cry. Okay. So then we get into a scene where Jasmine uh, is looking at a pregnancy test across from Brittany. So obviously there is some obviously conversation about getting pregnant again for Brittany and Jax. And, you know, Jax in the next scene that we see is like, I'm just bringing another kid into the world. And Brittany's like, I live for my kids. I live for my kids. And she's starting to cry. And Jax immediately shuts her off. Like, oh, hey, don't with the tears. Don't do it. Cry. See, I can't even have an emotion. No, you can't. And then she's like, see, I can't even have an emotion. And I hate doing the Britney voice because that looks like a very serious scene. But she's like, I can't have an emotion. And Jax is like, no, you can't. You can't. So you have two people. One completely uh, having an emotional episode, very sad. And you have Jax completely shutting that person down. It just so happens that person that he's shutting down is his wife that he has a family with. And Jax just looks like, come on, shut up. Stop it already. Are you kidding me? Rain it in, Brittany. I don't feel like he's attracted to me. Like we don't have sex ever. Well, so hard. To okay. So then we're at like some place in the Valley where there's swings and Janet, uh, Caperna is on one swing and Brittany's on the other. And she's like, I don't even think he's attracted to me. We haven't had sex in months. Like, and I was like, Oh shit. Oh, here we go. Like, I, you know, that's, this is the, this is why, like, why come back to reality television? Why put a spotlight on all of your issues? Like I, you know, to this point, I guess I never really thought of like, are Jax and Brittany still having sex? Like it was like one of those like blissful uh, ways of existing where I just never thought about that. And now I'm having to think about it. I'm not like, he's not laying it down on Brittany and Brittany's on a swing next to Janet. Sad that Jax isn't doing the the deed. And then I was like, and then we hear Jax, like the music's like, and Jax is like, Oh, there's just a lot of temptation out there, you know? And we see Jax like talking with this like blonde haired girl, looks kind of pretty. You married sometimes? There's a rumor about Jax cheating online. You were texting like sexy pictures of yourself. Okay, so then Janet talking to Jason saying there's a rumor about Jax cheating online. I mean, listen, when in the last 12 years has there not been a rumor about Jax cheating online? We cut to another scene where Jax looks like he's talking to uh, the uh, Michelle Lally, who is married to Jesse Lally, the real estate agent. And Jax is saying like, sending like sexy photos online. So the Frankenstein editing here makes it look like Jax is, Jax is potentially saying that this girl, Michelle, sent sexy photos. It almost makes it seem like sent sexy photos to him because Michelle Lally's look, when you hear the Jack's voiceover, looks like she's looking at Jack's going like, yeah, so what of it? 
you know, and like, oh, is there like, you know, that's how it makes it look. I have a feeling this isn't actually what it is trying to look like it is, but who knows? Do you want this relationship to work? I don't know. Okay. So then we go to that, uh, Jesse Lally and Michelle Lally having a conversation and Jesse is like, do you want this relationship to work? And she goes, I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. Once you get into reality television, there's always one couple. There's one couple that's like together, that's been together for a long time, possibly on the verge of breaking up where you have Jackson, Brittany, but then there's always like some new couple that we've never met before. And they've literally gone on reality television at the worst time in their relationship, which almost like assures that they're going to break up. You never know. That's what happens when your friend's saying behind your back. I don't know how to manage raising a child, raising a family, starting a business. Do you think everybody... So then we have like Jax and Brit, like Jax talking to Brittany of like, I don't know how to manage you starting a bit, starting a saloon, starting a family, managing this, managing that, like the, the ballad of Jax Taylor. We see him laying on a couch, like, woe is me. And then we cut to a scene with Janet and Jason Caperna. He was just as happy as us before they had kids. Instead of caring about. So Janet's relaying to, to Jason of like, do you think they were as happy as us before they had the kids? Uh, and that, I think Janet and Jason seem like they have a very solid relationship, but then in the next scene, Janet's laying in bed. Janet, remember pre very pregnant during the, the filming of this. Everybody else's feelings maybe think like, is she okay? Janet, just talk to me, please. Don't close the door on me. I'm okay. So now then that's obviously a Janet and Jason scene where Janet is like, do you ever think about like, you know, you're thinking about every other buddy's feelings, but you know, you're actually not thinking about mine. And then we see a camera shot of a camera following Jason down the stairs. And he's like, Janet, just listen to me. Janet, don't slam the door on me. And the door slams. And I'm like, oh, reality television. Does Done. It's Done. Like I know you are. You're my husband and you're trying to make me look like I'm a bad person. She is a okay. So we see a couple of the other cast ma castmates including Danny Bucco crying. There's a couple guys crying. And then we have Brittany Cartwright. You know, they look like they went away on some trip together because it looks like an Airbnb type place. And she's like, pops her head. like, you gonna make me look crazy, but like the fuck you, fuck you to Jax. Like, it's like very rotten hell kind of voice. And Jax says, the problem. She's the fucking ships. problem. Your lips sink like so then there goes to a scene. This is very fastly edited together. So sorry for the stop starts, you guys. But uh, Kristen Doty is in a scene with Zach Wickham. And Kristen Doty is like, loose lips sink ships. And Zach is like, your lips sink. Like, your lips sink fucking armadas, girl. Full on armadas. She sent one of her little minions to spy on us. I feel like sometimes I'm the only one who ever has to own my sh You know what you have done. Okay, so then there seems to be some scenes with Kristen Doty where Jasmine is talking to one of the ladies of like potentially Kristen sending people or what it seems like Kristen sending people to spy on them. And then Kristen crying to Luke something about like, oh, I'm the only person that I, you know, you know, being very angry. And then it cuts to the scene in what looks like an apartment hallway. You see a lot of doors. And I believe this is, uh, Jesse, sorry, Michelle Lally talking to Christian Doty. There's a bunch of people out there. To my marriage and my life and my daughter. Your husband said on camera that he's going to divorce you. You better get her Okay, so this is between Jesse and Michelle Lally. So, you know, Michelle to Kristen Doty is like, you're trying to ruin my marriage, my family. And Kristen's like, your husband's on camera saying he wants to fucking divorce you. And then you see Jesse Lally going, you better get your woman in check. Like flipping out. We see Luke in the background. We see Brittany in the background. It's freeze framed. The only reason I know it's Brittany is because she has the huge gigantic double Ds that Jax bought her. Like, so you see Zach Wickham involved. Like, this is like a, a, a rumble in the jungle right now. Rumble in the valley. You know what? She is the queen of England because she's dead to me. Okay, so Zach Wickham, another sassy comment. You, she, you know, she is the queen of England because she's dead to me. I would almost go with, and it would be more, uh, you know, in the news right now, like, uh, she is Kate Middleton because I can't find her or so. I don't know. I'm working it out. But anyways, that's directed towards somebody. We see Christian and Luke running off or like walking off in that hallway scene. Sign up for this all over again. It goes to go through it again. It's rather me on the rules. 
So Doty says, oh, I have to go through all of this all over again? I would rather be on Vanderpump Rules. Boom! Saying that to Luke. Poor Luke. He's like chopping wood in Colorado. And now he's like all of a sudden a part of like this TV mess. But Chris and Doty says, I would rather be on Vanderpump Rules. Now, Doty, like I said, was on the podcast with Jackson Brittany today. I read a synopsis on Vanderpump Recaps, their Instagram page. And uh, Jax was making fun of Doty for saying uh, Vanderpump Rules. You know, like, oh, I can't believe you said that. Oh! Music at the very end, it goes, oh, like it's epic. Like it's like gladiator, like, oh. So you guys, that is the Valley. Will you be tuning in? And by the way, even if you say no, I don't believe you. I know you will be tuning in and we'll rip it apart and we'll rip it apart. But then we'll like maybe slowly start to like it. I think you are going to like certain aspects of this. I think the first episode does what a first episode is supposed to do. I'm very curious how we move on from there to the second, the third, and the fourth. And the more I talk about it, like I said at the beginning, I'm still just wildly unsure. I think a lot of the Jack's Britney thing, I think it maybe it's grounded or rooted in some sort of reality, but at the same time, I think they're exploiting it to get us talking about it. And, and we are. But I, there's something in it so weird about the timing of all of this. Like you pick a couple weeks before this show airs to get everything going again. But the reality of this situation, though, is their marriage would be naturally put to the test because this year after Scandaval, Jackson Brittany was a, were able to get their podcast. They did open the saloon. There are a lot of things that would actually bring trouble to a relationship. I'm just going to be... I just think these days, like, don't try to manipulate the system when the reality of things are just as fascinating, you know? And if this is a manipulation of the system, I hope it is called out and I hope someone actually admits it. And I hope it's Brittany. I hope Brittany actually has to break down like, ah, Jack told me to. I don't know. So anyways, uh, I'm excited to see it. I'll, I'll watch it. Definitely. We'll talk about it on this show. But that is the Valley second trailer. Uh, also, uh, guest appearance on the first episode. This is like, this is, I should have led with this. Rachel Levis is in the first episode of The Valley. No, I'm joking, but wouldn't that be crazy? No, it's just the people that I talked about. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye.